Welcome back to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be talking about installing Docker. And this is a video for the end of one of my write-ups that I just finished on my favorite way to install Docker. So today we're going to spend probably more time talking about what each of these two commands do than actually installing Docker. But let's go ahead get to this process and get this video done so it's nice and quick. We're going to use Proxmox to do the actual presentation and install of Docker here just because it's an easy quick way of doing the process. But these commands should work on Raspberry Pi, Ubuntu, Debian, or anything else that you're really trying to install Docker on that is Debian based. The commands may vary a little bit if you you're using CentOS or Red Hat. So right now I'm just going to start by creating a container here on Proxmox. But again, the actual process of creating this container doesn't really matter. The thing that matters is we're going to be doing this on Ubuntu. And this process works for most Debian based operating systems to install Docker. So now that we have the container set up, let's just go ahead and start it up. And we'll blow it up nice and well. Now, because this is a container, we log in with root, but obviously you're going to have to log in with whatever username you have if you're not working with a container. And the first thing we always do when we get to a fresh installed operating system or before we install a new set of software is to update repositories and Docker is no different. So we're just going to do that with an AT update. If you're doing this on another operating system, you may want to add sudo in front of the apt command. And there are some software that we can up upgrade. It's not essential to do the upgrade before an install, but I do like to go ahead and keep everything up to date. And so at this point, I do an apt upgrade, and I'll always just end it with a dash y. And this command is entirely unnecessary if you're doing this on a bunch or Debian, but inside of this Ubuntu container and inside of most containers, the software Carl is not pre-packaged, so we're going to have to go ahead and run the command apt install and Carl and dash y. So now that all of that prerequisite is done, it's time to install Docker with just two commands or really one command. The second command is just for user configuration so that we don't have to enter sudo every time before executing a Docker command if we're not in a root user account like we are today. And here's the command that we're going to be executing. Carl is a command line tool that is used for making HTTP requests and we're going to use that to essentially communicate with a website and download a script. The next part of this command is the lowercase s, uppercase s, and uppercase L. The first s, the lowercase s, stands for silence. It's not going to output all of the information from the download process. The next, the capital S, is to force Carl to show any error messages that happen during the download process. And the last one, the uppercase L, will tell Carl that we want it to follow any redirects that happen in the URL process. The next part of this command, the HTTPS colon slash slash get.docker.com is the URL where we'll be downloading the script. Then we have a pipe delimiter, which will pass an operator from the right side of the command to the left side of the command. In this case, that operator is going to be sh, which is a command line interpreter for executing commands. In this case, we're going to be executing commands from a script, but this can do it if you're also entering commands via the command line. So now that we understand this command fully, we can go ahead and press enter and it's going to run this script. Now at this point we have Docker installed and I'm not going to go further into this script it talks about, but basically 
there's a way of running Docker rootless, which improves security. That's going to be for another video. But to execute Docker at this point, we can start running Docker commands like the Docker PS command to view what is running. But if we had a separate user account, which I'll go ahead and make right now for demonstration purposes, because our container didn't have it, most likely if you're outside of a container, you will already have that user account created, we'll need to run another command before we can start issuing Docker commands without putting sudo in front of those commands. So what you'll see me doing right now is just creating that next user account. So I'm just gonna log out at this point so I can log back in with that new user account that we created. And we're ready to issue that last and final command in a way that's probably similar to any operating system that you're going to be using if you're not in a Proxmox LXC container. And that's going to be the user mod command, which is going to add the Docker user to this user so you don't have to issue sudo every time. Because right now, if we were to run that Docker PS command just like we did before, we would actually get an error message. So we'd have to do sudo docker ps and enter our sudo password in order to do that. But there's a simple and easy way to fix that, which is adding this user to the docker user group. So here's the command that we're going to issue, which uses sudo, which is the super user do. It basically tells the system to run this as root. User mod is a command for modifying a user account. In this case, we're gonna modify the VE account, but that's gonna come a little later in this command. We're gonna follow that by A, which is going to be to append or add information to this user, and dash G, which is going to add the following text, which is Docker or the Docker group to this command. So we're going to append a group named Docker to the user that we would specify at the end. And we're gonna use dollar sign user in capital because that's a variable inside of the shell for the user and basically it ties it back to VE. So we could actually replace the dollar sign capital user with VE or whatever user you had and it would do the same thing. Pressing enter returns no output, but now if we were to run Docker PS, oh, we have to log out first. So we can just exit and log back in. And now if we were to run PS, we would get no error message. And this is my really my favorite way to install Docker because it's a nice, straightforward, easy process that doesn't involve adding keys and repos and other commands that you have to copy like the suggested way on the Docker website. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this made installing Docker on your systems a little bit more straightforward and easy. As always, have a good night and and if you enjoyed this content, found it educational or at least informational, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to help virtualize everything continue to grow. As always, have a good night.